Hello and welcome to this video that will talk about local control that belongs to DRTS. DRTS or Digital Relay Test Set has um, useful local control. So this is the family DRTS 66, which also contains DRTS 64, 34 and 33. And in this short video, I'm just going to make a short introduction. What can you find in this local control? So first of all, there is manual control, as you can see here, and manual control we'll discuss in details later. So also later we're going to talk about distance and overcurrent application. So these are three options. These are three applications you can open and use in the local control. There is also the header. So in the header, you can punch in the values of a substation or a plant, feeder, location, etc., etc. These values will later be copied onto a um, onto a report. And then the last but not least auxiliary settings here allows you to do one thing. If here you can control the DC output uh, or battery simulator as we call it which provides a DC voltage usually used to power up your relay or energy meter or power quality meter or even a transducer. So here you would decide what is the voltage. You can increase or decrease with the knob or you can just write in a certain value. But let's say in my case this is 110. And then you can check this option. Disable VDC changes is very useful because this means if you check this, it means that you will constantly have DC voltage on the DC output. Regardless whether you stop or start or reset the test, whether you enter or exit the application, you will always have the voltage. And this is useful if you are testing a relay, which is multifunctional. And first you want to check the measurement, maybe in the manual mode. After that, you will do some overcurrent tests. And after that, you will do some distance tests. So this is a very useful thing. And as you have checked disable BDC changes, you can click on and now my relay starts and uh, I can do my tests. Further on, we have burden settings. Actually, when you are generating current uh, or voltage, this is where you can see the impedance of your current and voltage measurement circuit. And also you can use this option in case you have a very high burden uh, relay if you have alarms because of distorted waveform in this case you can punch in here uh, a certain impedance and you can ignore that alarm so the DRTS will generate this value whether it is a little distorted or not it will not stop so moving on we can also see the option which is the simulator, CB simulator. So A3 and A4 binary outputs will be used to send the position of a circuit breaker. So for that, I need to enable it here. And then we can also configure more in details what are the states like intermediate states, not closed state, etc., etc. Here you can configure the close command. So is it from open command or from open position? And these are, these are the elements for simulating a circuit breaker. This button here allows us to see some uh, parameters of the DRTS. For example, let's start from the beginning. Configuration will show us what is the firmware version for certain boards. Supply will show us what is the supply also for and here it's important to show that you can choose right now we see the supply for currents one two and three and then here we can see four five and six and then also supply for the voltage card number one voltage amplifier number one and supply for voltage amplifier number two temperature can be important information also we choose which amplifier we want to see the temperature for is it current one two three or currents four five six or is it voltage one, two? So the first voltage amplifier or the second voltage amplifier. So we see the temperature and the last one would be the measurement. This would be the output voltage, the output current and the reverse supply. Again, for voltages uh, three and four, voltages uh, 
this I'm sorry, three and four. This is uh, one and two. Currents four, five, six, and currents one, two, three. So these are the information where you can see maybe if you have an overheat or maybe if the card is not supplied correctly and in order to get out of this you have to press shift and f3 so that's what we're going to do shift and f3 then the option here with the diskette is actually the option to save the configuration not to save the results but if you change certain parameters like predefined frequency or output current or output voltage or something like that uh, you can save that or header or, or anything nominal current nominal voltage if you press this it will be saved uh, once again it saves the configuration it does not save the result and then the last one would be settings settings is a very useful configuration because here we can see the date uh, we can see the time we can change the date and the time and in the option software you will see uh, that there is a language to be changed so here in this firmware we have English, Italian and French but we also have uh, Russian, Chinese and some other languages uh, what, what is this? so this is very important because there are three ways how you can change values and we will cover that in the next video but just in short this is where you define increments because you can change the let's say voltage value with these two buttons so this is how much will it be changed with these two buttons or you can change the value just with a knob which is this or you can change the value with a knob plus F5 so this is you would press F5 knob and then you will change the value so for each one of these you can um, select what is the step for voltage current angle frequency time and impedance screensaver maximum is one hour so after 3600 seconds the screensaver would kick in and the last option here is ways of showing current and voltage in remote control this is useful because if you want to see the values how much current and how much voltage are you generating when you connect with a computer you will check this option if you check this option status you will not see the amplitude of current voltage angle or frequency you will have virtual leds which will light up if that particular output is active which means if I use just the DC output then just that one will be active but we will cover that in the next uh, video when we talk about manual control uh, going back no network here communication means that I'm not connected with any computer right now using Ethernet but if I wanted to connect this is the place where I would find my IP address and you can see that the IP address of this device is 192.168.0.91 if you want to connect your computer then your computer needs to have a static IP address and in this case it would be it should be 192.168.0 and then for example 92 anyway this your computer can have any IP address between 1 not including 1 and 254 not including 254 so let's say 192.168.0 92 and after moving on hardware configuration shows us which options are installed so in this particular DRTS we see uh, that there are no other options installed otherwise I would have green sign here I see my firmware version which I would also be able to show you in, in another place and the serial number of this device as well as the power supply of uh, a firmware version of my power supply and the last one would be the firmwares of amplifiers so voltage 1 and 2 and voltages 3 and 4 and currents 1 and 2 and currents uh, sorry 1 2 3 and 4 5 6 because this device has two voltage and two current amplifiers so this is a short introduction I hope you like this the next video will talk about the manual control and I hope to get a thumbs up and a subscription to my channel Thank you very much.